Okay, this is a video for yourself, Jed. I'm going to make you a video for yourself. And you're going to make a uh, Visual Studio 2010 ASP.NET MVC3 web application. And this, uh, in this application, we are going to, um, you and I, <laughs> we're going to show you how to uh, create a, a simple application that allows a person to log in and get authenticated by username and password keep a session going and how to have a uh, how to use the Razor View uh, engine using the HTML helpers client-side uh, client-side validation server-side validation and uh, layouts which are like master pages or a uh, you know a global page and um, this is just going to be the skeleton just to, you can reference anytime you want. So create a Visual Studio uh, MVC3 web application and then you're going to choose an empty template using the Razor View engine and then use HTML5 semantic markup. Visual Studio will create a bunch of directories and import a lot of uh, references and you'll see a lot of these scripts here that it automatically creates for us and we're going to pretty much ignore most of that, uh, but it's pretty neat that MVC creates all these things for us. Okay, um, like I said, this will be just the skeleton to keep your thoughts going, or just so you can use this as a reference. So, first thing we're going to do is create a controller. So I right click on the controllers directory and select add controller. And this one is going to be, I'm going to call this one home. So we've got a home controller. And then I can right click inside the uh, index action result method and select add view. This will automatically add a view for this controller. And now I can just type in here anything I want. I'll just type in welcome home. And let's just change the header uh, and the title of this page. You don't have to do this, but I'm doing it anyway. So now if we were to just run this F5 we will see that the uh, web page home is displayed. This is exactly what we created. If we view the source, we can see that it's very simple, very plain, and nothing extra added to it, which is great. Okay, so I'm going to close this, stop uh, debugging it, and one thing I want to mention here is how did it know to, how did MVC know to go to the home page? Um, let's, let's go back here again. Notice how up here in the URL uh, we don't have a home directory or anything defined. It's just a, the index page. The reason why this is working that way is because if we go into the global ASAX page and go into the register routes method, you'll see that here we have a map route uh, or a route added to the map route collection called default that's just the route name and you'll see how the syntax is you specify the controller name then an action then an ID the the trick here is this part this default route goes to the home controller and the index method so anytime a uh, this website is accessed without a um, uh, speci specified URL, it goes to this route itself. So that's in the global ASAX page. All right. <coughs> so now we want to add a um, a login form. So let's create a new controller. And this login form is going to going to allow a, a user to log in. So I'm going to name it in login. And I'm now going to add a uh, another method called or I'm going to make it an HTTP POST method and I'll explain why you do this public action result index and I'm going to make it be a uh, login model and we're going to 
view. Now we don't have a login type, so I'm going to uh, control period this, and I'm going to generate a class for the login model. And notice uh, MVC or the Visual Studio automatically adds it to the same directory here in the controllers directory. I'm going to click and drag the login model into my models directory. MVC has or yeah, MVC has a naming convention, and I have to put all my models in the models directory. So now I'm going to double click the login model, make this public, and now this model is going to represent. Um, Hold on, let me type first. Password. Okay, this model is going to be the data that is used for logging in to the website. And I want to make this required. Um, this is a data attribute or a data annotation, and it requires the, um, the import of the system dot component model dot data annotations uh, namespace. And this, the reason why we're putting this here now is because this <coughs> there's a lot of magic that happens in the background for with the Razor View Engine. If I put these data annotations in here, and in the web dot config, I have um, in these inside the app settings, I have the client validation enabled equals true and unobtrusive JavaScript enabled equals true. If these are true, then a lot of magic will uh, happen in the back end, and it'll be really nice for us. And you'll see you'll see how this all hooks up. But for now, just you add you, you can add these data attributes or data annotations to these properties, which uh, in this model, which represents the data that is going to be passed from the client or from the browser to the server uh, back and forth so it's a model okay so now we're going to go back to our home our login controller and so now we have a new uh, method that is uh, decorated with the HTTP post um, uh, class and what this means is that when this view the login view or the web page is called login um, is called or requested by the browser and it's not an HTTP post request this uh, default method is fired if it is an HTTP post request this method will be fired okay so now <coughs> uh, let's see what are we gonna do now we're going to right click on this HTTP post method and go to add view and then I'm going to keep the same name and then I want to create a strongly typed view and uh, in this this oh shoot it's not in here so I have to F6 gotta build it now if I go into here and add view my model should be in here so now we have the login model in here and I select it so that means all it does is add this line right here at model MVC controllers login model that's all it does so you could have I could have manually entered this in <coughs> okay so here we go we're gonna call this login and here's where a little bit of magic happens um, I'm going to you at using the HTML dot begin form and I surround this next code in the curly braces and I use HTML helpers and uh, we're going to do a label for use a little lambda expression to get our model out username and then HTML helper uh, text box for we'll just copy this save a couple seconds here Okay, now oh, this is a password. <coughs> and 
now we have to have our uh, input button. So type uh, input input type equals submit. And now we're going to use another HTML helper for the validation. See, this is the reason why I'm using this method is because um, the Razor engine will build the necessary HTML for us so that we can have client side validation. And in order for that to happen, not only do I use these HTML helpers, now I could, or let me just hold that thought. And then, uh, but I need the Java, the necessarily JavaScript packs, which is in the scripts uh, directory. And then there is one called jQuery validate and jQuery validate unobtrusive. I'm going to select both of those, and I use the min versions just to keep it small. <coughs> and here's a URL uh, helper. This just makes it so the uh, virtual paths are always correct. MVC will always make sure that it finds the right path. You got to make sure you get, use a little squiggly so it knows it's a virtual path. All right. Okay, so now what we have here, I'm going to build it. Okay. You see that we're in the index.cshtml page. This is the actual web page that is uh, that a client will request. They don't request it by this name, but this is where the HTML is uh, built. And the uh, Razor View Engine and MVC will create the necessarily HTML and etc. But and do the proper routing. Here's what we, you need to understand. At the very top here, we have the login model as our model for this page. Every single view can support up to one model. We're going to use this login model. In other words, we are specifying that this view understands what the username and password data is. In addition to that, it understands that both of those data fields are required. Okay, moving on down, <coughs> we have uh, we're, we've added these uh, JavaScript packs that will allow uh, the brow uh, allow valid validation on the client side. Now these HTML um, helpers here um, informs the Razor View Engine to build um, a HTML form based on this model here on this model and the label for is it's going to be it's going to create an HTML label uh, for the username and data and there's going to be a text box that's built for the username and let's just run this and look at the view source. So here's the home page. It's going to be fired up. And let's manually go to the login view. And so you can see that we have this uh, web form here. I mean, this, yeah, this uh, HTML form presented to us just as we have. Let's look at the view source. The view source. It's not easy to look at because it's not formatted correctly, but you'll see that uh, in here we have the scripts right where we placed them, and then this form is built. Nothing fancy; it just makes an action form. I mean, action it points to the login page, and um, it's a post method. And then here we have the label uh, username, and it specifies for username. This is what the Razor View Engine auto automatically built for us. The input was automatically built for us. And you'll see these data dash um, attributes added to it. This is for client side validation support. And it automatically added an ID of username. So that's going to be used by the client side validation and is the label for as well. Um, the point is, <coughs> it's very slim. The, the source that's built by the Razor View Engine, very slim, not a lot of fancy stuff going on. It's just your basic stuff that you need. And because we have client-side validation in the web.config file set to true, uh, these data dash